91.7. Good afternoon and welcome to Women Radio 91.7. This is The Big Question. Today on The Big Question, we're discussing 16 days of activism on violence against women. The Big Question is the program where we discuss and prefer solutions to issues affecting us as a nation and as citizens. Today we've been referencing, we have been referencing the series on 16 days of activism in commemoration of the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, which is an annual international movement aimed at addressing issues of violence against women and girls. The campaign began on Friday, 25th November, 2022, and will be wrapping up the campaign tomorrow, Saturday, 10th December, the Human Rights Day. My name is Sumto Titilayo Achamma. During the 16 days of activism, we will be or we have been reviewing some organizations and their achievements and strategies in the prevention and elimination of violence against women and girls. Today, my guest is Imam Jamil K. Kwadri, Jamatul Islamia of Nigeria, Ogolunto Ikorodu branch. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us, Imam Jamil. Good afternoon. Bye-bye. It's my pleasure to join you. Thank you. You're very welcome. The number to call to contribute today is 07000 917 917. 07000 917 917. You can also send in your text message or WhatsApp messages to 0703 175 6537. 0703 175 6537. All right, so we're going to begin with the state of Nigeria's success so far when it comes to fighting against violence against women and girls in Nigeria. How would you say that Nigeria has done? What would your assessment be? What would your assessment be for Nigeria as a country when it comes to fighting against gender-based violence? Uh, we give thanks to Almighty Allah. I'm Imam Jami, as you previously introduced me. Well, um, what I can just say as an imam is that from the altars of worship, we are trying our best. And then I thank God that um, the body like you are also doing your part to improve this um, violence against women and girls in our nation. Um, but what I'm just what I'm just saying is that uh, Nigeria culture, there are some cultures in Nigeria that what we are calling violence, what is violence in real, uh, to them, it's just a norm, just a culture. So I think with um, some enlightenment, like the one you are doing right now, it might help a lot to let our girls, our women, know their rights and what they're supposed to claim in the society. But generally in Nigeria, there are a lot of violence that are going on every day. Nigerians see it as norm. They don't see it as violence, but per se. Hmm. But you are doing a very good job by enlightening our women. And I pray to Almighty Allah to continue to help you and your, and your organization. Thank you. Thank you very much, Imam Jamil. Thank you very much for that. So what, what measures and strategies have you put in place in the fight against women and girls, in the fight against ending violence against women and girls in at the mosque and worship centers. You're an imam. Is this something that you talk about? What measures or strategies have you put in place to speak against violence against women and girls and to um, ensure that this is something that people are aware of and people desist from doing? Well, first of all, I would like to just mention something. When we are, whenever we are doing marriage in Islam, one of our elements that we must put in place in any marriage of Islam is to make sure that the marriage has four guardians. These, we are calling them uh, witnesses. Okay. These four guardians does uh, the violence from uh, home, from mm -hmm. the marriage. So we always make sure that we have these four people to make sure that there is nothing like violence in that marriage. Coming to, to, to the mosque issue, in our mosque, and in many mosques, as I know, we have some things that Islam has put in place for us to, to prevent any violence against women. First, 
In Islam, we believe that women should pray in their house. Their prayer in the house is better, is more rewardable than their prayer in the mosque. So that's four measures that Islam put in uh, fighting against the violence. And then we have some other measures that, but in my own mosque, we, we believe that um, lecturing, counseling, time to time will help our women. So every fourth Sunday of the month, we, we are using it to enlighten our women. And uh, we are telling them their rights. We are telling them how to get into marriage. We are telling them their rights and then um, every necessary things to help them fight against um, violence. So I think that's all what I can say regarding the measure of my mosque uh, and strategy that we put in place uh, in, uh, in my own mosque. Okay, thank you very much. Please, what do you mean by the prayer from the home is, is more effective than the prayer from the church? Can you shed more light on that? No, no. That is not, not church. I'm not talking about from church. The mosque, I'm talking from the about mosque. mosque. In Islamic gathering, we believe that's Quran chapter 33. I'm reciting Quran chapter 33 for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in that chapter that for, for a woman to observe a daily prayer in their house, is more rewardable than coming down to pray in the mosque. That's why you see in some Arab nations and even in some northern uh, states here in Nigeria, you will see their mosque without a um, place for women. Their mosque is only for men. So it is we in the south that we are, we are giving a room for, we are giving space for women in our mosque. So this is telling us that uh, in Islam, we want our women, we want to prevent our women from any violence from the mosque. We don't want any violence for our women in the mosque. So they should pray with their, their children at school. That's more rewardable in Islam. That's Quran chapter 33, and it is very famous within Muslims. They know it. Okay, all right. So, what, what, are your, what is your messaging to the men? in the mosque about gender-based violence, about violence against women and girls. What is it that you tell them about that? Uh, I, well, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's our noble prophet that we follow, we believe in. Uh, he, he let us know a lot of things about the importance of our female in the society. And then in one thing of this, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he, he told every man, every Muslim, that women are the equal sisters of men. Are you there? Of course, I'm with you. Women are the equal sisters of men. So women make up half of our society, mm -hmm. and they are responsible for the nurturing, guidance and reformation of the subsequent generations of men and women. That's the idea of Prophet Muhammad. That's the word of Prophet Muhammad. So if our prophet that we all follow puts women in a very important position, so it is very important for all Muslim men to also regard them as a important genital. So we don't have to ridicule them or or put any violence against against them. So it is not Islamic to write to raise any violence against women. It is not Islamic. Hmm. So if anybody is doing it and we are saying it is alpha or he is an alpha or he is a this is that it's, it's a, not Islamic. It is not Islamic. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for saying that. However, is this communicated in the mosques? Is this a message that is being passed across to the men in the mosques? So, be sincere with you. I'm talking for my own for my own organization. Yes. We always say it. We always say it. My own organization, and then the most organizations I know, like NASA, mm -hmm. like Kori, like Ansarudi. I know some scholars from those organizations. I know that they are saying it frequently. Hmm. 
Okay. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate you clearing that up. Thank you. It is 15 minutes past 12 on Women Radio 91.7. This is still the big question, and we're still continuing in this series on 16 days of activism on gender-based violence, or 16 days of activism on violence against women. We're doing this in commemoration of the 16 days of activism, of activism campaign, which is focused on addressing issues of violence against women and girls. This series will be wrapping up tomorrow, Saturday, 10th December, as it started Friday, 25th November, 2022. Today, my guest is Imam Jamil K. Kwadri, Jamato Islamia of Nigeria, Ogolonto Ikoroju branch. He's still discussing with us on the efforts of his organization and their efforts on the efforts of his organizations in in eliminating and or, or preventing uh, sexual and gender-based violence on women and girls. The number to call is 07000 917 917. 07000 917 917. You can send in text messages or WhatsApp messages to 0703 175 6537. 0703 175 6537. All right, so I'm coming back to you now, Imam Jamil. Okay. How, how would you... Okay. How would you address the culture of, of silence on violence against women and girls in worship centers by partners and religious leaders? Now, before you continue, you've spoken about... Uh, you, you've spoken earlier about the fact that this is something that you preach against in your mosque and in some sure. other... Uh, some other mosques that you know, some other Islamic gatherings that you know, that they always sure. speak about this exactly. But now, sure, when it sure, comes sure. to the culture of silence, which what we mean by that is the fact that some of these women are going through um, physical violence, domestic violence, emotional violence, but they don't speak out because they don't think there's anybody to listen to them. How would you address that? What would your message to people like that, to women or girls like that, what would it be? I would like to advise some of our organizations, religious organizations per se, uh, though we are having it, but we should do more on it. Uh, separating of power. Uh, some women believe that they are imam or they are pastors are their Lord. So whenever they do them any wrong thing, any wrong act, they will find it very difficult for them to, to speak against their imams or their pastors. So in Islamic organization, uh, we are normally, we separate power. The power is separated. So we have some panels, we have some committees, and an imam knows the angle he, he holds. Like my own organization, let me take my own organization as an mm -hmm. example. Uh, we have seven divisions in a code so each division has their own residential imam. So uh, on every Friday, they will rotate imam. They will not permanent your residential imam in your mosque. Hmm. So this Friday, you may go to division division one imam, you may go to division five, division six imam, you may go to division three. So by doing this, you will know that your imam is not your lord. So and then you know colleagues of your imam. So whenever anything happens from your own residential imam, you know who to report for your imam to. So we have this, we put this in place. Then we also, like, we, all, we always recite a particular hadith for our people. Mm -hmm. So not on uh, this uh, foul, violence, uh, violence alone. We generally, Prophet Muhammad says, when whoever among you observe anything, that is not okay by him or by her. Prophet Mehmed advised the person to, to stand against that issue by writing it out. My PA on uh, social media, write it on paper, let people know what is happening to you. That's the idea of Prophet Mehmed. If you can't write it down, mm -hmm. pick it out. That's the idea of Prophet Mehmed. Even Prophet Mehmed said, if you can't write it and you can't say it, always have it in mind that what is happening to you is wrong. But having it in mind is um, weak, is a weak sense. 
to that stage is not acceptable in Islam. You must neither write it, let people read about it, mm. or stick it out, let people hear about it. That's the Yadis of Prophet Muhammad. So we always let people know this Yadis. So either violent or anybody reject you or deny you your right, speak out. Let mm. people know what is happening to you. So we are, we are doing it in our own organization, and uh, I know some Islamic organization I know, they are also doing it. So Fowler from the uh, worship center, yes. and I mean Islam, mosque, I believe that it is very, very minimal. From the mosque, though, mm-hmm. I believe that it is very, very minimal. Hmm. Okay, thank you very much. So let me just ask a direct question. In cases where uh, someone comes to report domestic violence to you now, what kind of action will be taken in such a situation? Proof, domestic violence. If you have to know some um, elders who are working with legal state governments, we have them here in Nikoroju, even we have them at Alausa who are working with government to kick against violence, the domestic violence. Mm. So I had their number on my phone. As an imam, I used to call them time to time and they give us uh, the normal advice and the normal support. So for my own mosque, we are doing that regularly. So, and then there are some things that will cause violence. Once we call them, they will tell us that it's not violence. You should do it this way, you should do it this way. They will just counsel us to correct that, uh, that issue. So we always call them, and then at times, if I realize that this does not go up to that uh, government level, mm-hmm. so we used to call our elders in the mosque to talk to the person uh, in, uh, in the matter, so to try to correct him to do the, the, the needful. Uh, thank you. Hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. It's 22 minutes past 12 on Women Radio Night 1.7, and we're still discussing 16 days of activism on violence against women. 16 days of activism on violence against women. We're analyzing the uh, achievements and strategies, or more like reviewing the achievements and strategies in the prevention and elimination of violence against women and girls. So we're doing this in commemoration of the 16 Days of Activism campaign, which is focused on addressing issues of violence against women and girls. The number to call to join the conversation is 07000-917-917. 07000-917-917. You can also send in text messages or WhatsApp messages to 0703-175-6537. 0703-175-6537. 6537. You can call in or send text messages or WhatsApp messages. I'm still speaking with Imam Jamil K. Kodri, Jamal uh, Jamatu Islamia of Nigeria, Ogolunto Ikorodu branch. Okay, so Imam Jamil, um, do you ever speak about uh, reporting cases, reporting cases to the relevant authorities like law enforcement, the police? Um, you know, the police and other organizations that can take up these cases to provide justice for these women and girls that have been violated. Do you, is that something that you speak about? Yes, yes. But I've never, I've never gone beyond reporting to, to the, the body I know mm-hmm. at Alamsa, and I've never gone beyond that. I've never, I've never reported anybody to, to police officers or but the violence, as you know, the domestic violence, as you know, uh, is something some people are silent on. They don't speak out. So there are some families who, if you take it higher than their expectation, you end, you have become their, their, their enemy. So we take it with a very, it is a delegate, it is a delegate uh, issue. And we take, we take it as we speak it. So we don't go beyond want, what the victim wants us to do. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you receive any report in the month, the victim herself will even tell us not to go beyond this and this. 
So and then we be we inside the man and uh, in the matter. So with our discussion with him and uh, with the family, we always realize that what we just need to do is more enlightenment on how to live together as husband and wife. So we don't we never go beyond discussing the uh, discussion and enlightenment and then if the the least thing we we've done mm -hmm. is to report to the body I said that you know at Alamsa. We've never reported anyone to police before, we've never reported to any law enforcement before. Mm. But I think that the woman I used to call at Alamsa she's uh, she's also in law enforcement but she has never shown up with any other other step to just advise and counsel. Mm. But do you believe in justice for these women in case they've been beaten or violated yeah. or raped in any way? Uh, to be sincere with you, the rape case has never come down to our mouth. But the other, the violence and the other used to come occasionally. Mm. Okay. And then the justice, as little as we can, we provided it. Thank you very much. So are there, are there people, are there stakeholders that you would like to work with using, are there stakeholders that you would like to collaborate so that they can use their own area of influence to speak and advocate against violence against women and girls? We will appreciate it. We will appreciate it. We will love it. That is, that is a step forward. We will like it. Because to us in Islam, boom, is the beginning, is the primary agenda of any nation. If you fail from home, the nation will fail. Hmm. So if there is violence in any family, there will be violence in the nation. So we believe so much in peaceful home and whatever that will help us to achieve that, we we'll also give it a, a, a premium attention. So if you can introduce anybody or any, any organization to help us to cure peace, uh, to our own, to, to, to every family, to every home. We'll appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. Then let me now ask, what, what kind of support do you provide to survivors of gender and of uh, gender-based violence? People that have escaped domestic violence situations and they come to the mosque for some kind of shelter, some kind of solace. Do you offer these? Mm -hmm. So what I can just say is that I have uh, said it, that it's not a common issue in every month. But once in a while, when we see that report, to we'll gather all the stakeholders in the month, our elders in the month, to look into it and do the needful. But sincerely, once or twice, I think we've received such a uh, report, we did the needful like providing for the person or for the victim all what support she needs to come back to her feet. All right. Thank you so much. Um, at this point, I would like to know what it is that is your call to action, your call to action for other religious leaders, because you've spoken a lot about yourself, what it is that you do, what it is that you believe in. What, uh, what is your call to action for other religious leaders out there that have um, maybe contrary opinions or just to let them know that uh, violence against women and girls is a crime and it shouldn't be existing at all? What is your call to action to other religious uh, leaders? Uh, well, I, alhamdulillah, uh, religion, and then our community leaders, they are the primary, they are the, the protector of our culture. And then they are doing a lot, they have a lot of roles to play in the fusion of this nation. And then uh, I would just like to say it, that there is no religion. There is no religion. I, I can't say much about uh, the culture, the tradition tradition, but I know much that there's no religion that will advise anyone to, to, to raise any violence against women. Hmm. So let me talk about Islam in particular. There are many things that is going out right there 
people might call it foreign. In Islam, Islam fought a lot against any kind of foreign against the woman. And then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he believed so much on females. And then there are many things that we achieved in this religion from the beginning, from the period of Prophet Muhammad, we achieved it through women. We know many, many that we achieved through women. In, in fact, the uh, combination of our Quran, Quran was not combined together during the period of Prophet Muhammad. They are trying to combine our Quran into one book, take from a woman. So we have a lot of of, of things that we can point out that it was brought by women. And the Prophet Muhammad never joked with women. In fact, Prophet Muhammad believed that our women, uh, they, are the, they, are, they are the ones who are planting principles of faith in the souls of our kids. And our kids are the leader of our tomorrow, are the leader of our tomorrow, uh, of our nation. So if they have problems, definitely our tomorrow is having problems. So it is uh, what every leader in the society, every religious leader in the society must take very serious. Our women, our women must always be happy. We must not give them any stress. We must not threaten them in any way. Hmm. You know, they are very important uh, part of this world. So we must take them as they are. So I'm um, advising them by what Prophet Muhammad has done, by what al Quran has done. So we should go back to how Prophet Muhammad always reacted whenever they brought the violence against women to Prophet Muhammad. Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad used to do a lot of things which it is right during, during his life period. So we're supposed to go back to how Prophet Muhammad did it and correct our own, our, our, our own manner to, towards our women. So mm. That's what I think I can say for now. Thank you so much, Imam Jamil. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you for laying down your thoughts on gender-based violence. Thank you very much again. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm very happy to be with you. Absolutely. Okay, Thank nice. you again. You too. It's obvious that religious education and counselling are very essential for women of religious backgrounds, as this will help address their experiences and victimisation. As he has said, it is evident that he believes in, in advocacy against gender-based violence and he speaks against it and is, in, is also imploring others, other religious leaders out there, to speak against gender-based violence. If you see something, say something. Religious texts and teachings can be used to assist those who have been abused in finding safety. On the other hand, it can also be used to justify or condone abusive behavior. And this is what we should not do as religious people. To join in the advocacy against uh, in, to join in the advocacy in eliminating violence against women and girls, religious leaders must be aware of the need to create more awareness and reach out to victims and survivors for support. So if you notice any form of abuse against women in your community, make sure to report it. Let us unite and be deliberate in eliminating violence against women and girls. Special thanks to my guest today, Imam Jamil K. Kwadri, Jamatul Islamia of Nigeria, Ogolunto Ikorudu, and to you for being a part of the big question today. Thank you very much to my producer, Elizabeth Akwerigbe, and to the executive producer, Tomo Okewali Shonaya. Thank you very much for tuning in and continuing to create more awareness about gender-based violence and its negative effects on people. Good afternoon. My name is Sumto Titilayo Ajama.